when someone walks into my office and sits down in my exam room, they bring all these things with them. They bring their culture, their art, their attitudes, their beliefs, their language, their customs, their rituals, their behavior, their faith, their religion, their foods, all of these things, their art, their drama, their music, uh, their attitudes, they bring all of these things with them. And for me to be a better clinician, I need to know that. I need to hear that. I need to see it and I need to incorporate it. And so culture humility came out of a, a, a group from a, two, two women, um, really Melanie uh, Turvalon and uh, Jan Murray um, uh, Garcia in the late 90s. And it was really a way of incorporating cult multiculturalism into the work as healthcare provider. So this is not new. This is a concept that's been around a long time. However, it's not something that uh, has been uh, honestly uh, practiced and incorporated into who we are. So cultural humility really is not a checklist. It's not trying to uh, develop uh, a new method of what we're doing. It's really just reorganizing the way that we do it. And so cultural humility is a process of self-reflection and discovery in order to build honest and trustworthy relationships. And that process of self-reflection is my responsibility as a clinician. I am here not to just dictate. My job is not to just roll out what we're going to do. My job is to be a partner. My job is to educate. My job <laughs> is to make sure that we have all of the most up-to-date, guideline-based information to make the best decision for yourself. Does that always mean that it's the decision that I would make? Probably in about 5 to 10% of my patients, it's not. However, if they're well-equipped, well-educated, then we can get to a place that is perfect for them.